Hi friends. Well, <clears throat> today's the day. Today is one year to the day that I made my first video, which is when I had to take my beloved Andy off life support. He passed away at 6.36 a.m. the following day, which will be tomorrow morning. So I thought it appropriate to go ahead and do this video at the one year mark. <laughs> as you can see, as always, Miss Baker has a lot to say about it. Don't you boo? What's the matter? So, wow, one year. I can hardly believe it. Um, the year is almost like a, a blur. It's still a blur. It probably always will be a blur. Um, that's what happens with traumatic things. Your brain does things in order to protect you. And I think that's a good thing. You know, if, if I consciously really think about it, you know, I, I feel those times. I do remember those times. I do remember what it was like. But when I think about it as a whole, it's all a blur. <laughs> because so many things happened so fast all at once. You know, um, it was bad that I was dealing, you know, with Andy's death, but then family drama. And apparently Miss Baker wants to say, hello, don't you? Are you into business? Are you into business, Kitty? Huh? Is that what you're doing while Mom is trying to talk here? Yes. So, um, anyway, um, the past few months, and it's really been just like September, October, November, I've really been feeling more in my new life uh, than, than before. And I'm getting there day by day. Um, if you ask me, am I happy? I can't quite say that, that I'm happy. Um, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm so grateful that for where I, I'm at and for the people who are around me. Uh, definitely, definitely. But I'm not sure that I can say I'm happy quite yet. Um, I'm content, I guess. Maybe that's a better word for it, content. Um, my relationship with Andy, of course, has, has changed. Excuse me. Got the burps. <laughs> um, yeah, my relationship with Andy has definitely changed. Um, I made a conscious decision this weekend that I'm going to stop wearing the... The necklace that I had with his cremains because I truly feel that um, I don't need him that close anymore. Yes, Baker. I don't need him that close anymore. I want him close, but I don't need him that close anymore. I have, um, I guess, maybe finally accepted the finality of... Um, that he's gone and he's not coming back and there's nothing that I can do except move forward. There's also an esoteric part of me, the spiritual part of me, the witch that says by continuing to wear it, I don't want to inadvertently trap him here. Because I'm very conscious of that. There are some people who just can't let go. And it's not good for the living, nor is it good for the dead. Andy has to go his way. Wherever that may land him, that's his journey. And, you know, I have to be strong enough to, to let that happen. To let us both begin anew. 
So, um, I still will be wearing my memorial ring. That's close enough. You know, I don't need both. And with him around my neck, I really felt a closeness to him in that fashion. And um, I just don't feel a need for it anymore. And, and like I said, I am fearful of somehow trapping his spirit here because I can't let go. And so I'm very conscious of, of these types of things that, that come up. Um, for anyone who is, is, is grieving, I think about those things. Um, so yeah, I want him to be able to move on and I need to move on with my life, which I have been. I, I have been moving on. I've hit a few slumps where, you know, life is difficult without him. He, he made my life so much easier. He made my life so much happier. Um, and, and now that, that is, that dynamic has changed and there are some things that I'm just, you know, not jiving with right now. And eventually I figure I will find my groove, but you know, it's going to take me a while. I think it's only been a year and there is no time limit on grief. I'm well aware of that fact. Um, and there are many different kinds of of grief. You don't have to be an absolute sobbing, unfunctioning mess to be grieving. Um, there are many different levels of grief I have come to find. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to let you know about that and uh, moving forward and, you know, some thoughts and plans on that. Now, Andy had always told me that he never wanted me to stop my life. If somebody else came into my life and made me happy, he wanted me to go with that. Now, that said, I'm not looking, okay? I'm not in the market. I'm not looking for anybody to replace him. Anything of that nature whatsoever. Not on the prowl, you know? Um, I'm just saying that... You know, I have the rest of my life to live, however long that is. And so I'm going to leave my life open for another love to to come in if that's the way it's supposed to go. If it's not supposed to go that way, then I'm perfectly okay being me by myself. Um, that's something else that I've noticed um lots of people have problems with who are grieving, especially over relationships, um, is the fact that um, who are they without that individual? You know, um, that's a tough one to get over. And that takes a whole lot of time to process. And I have seen it last years, I'm finding, especially with older people who have been married 50, 60 years. You know, Andy and I were together 17, and that was hard. I can't imagine spending what would be like three quarters of my life with an individual, and then suddenly they were gone. That is a heavy load of grief. And so there is a lot of inner processing that comes along with that. So, um, I also attribute some of my wellness to the fact that I've never been afraid of talking about death and dying. That has never been a taboo subject in my family. Um, it's something I've always been interested in. And so I'm sure that helped me. Also, I think being a witch and the way I practice and the beliefs I have also helped me achieve um, some equilibrium in, in all of this um, because I did have, I, I did know some of the things or I had beliefs on what happens to someone after they die um, that also brought me comfort as well. 
again, I have to reach out a huge thank you to uh, my friends here on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and everywhere because you were seriously the hands that held me up at the times I was the darkest. And um, I have to say, things just happened in a, a magical way for me. When I needed something or something, you know, when I needed something or someone, a gift would arrive in the mail, or I would get an email or a message or a, you know, a photo or something on Facebook or Instagram. And they were constant reminders to me that I wasn't alone. And that was huge, huge, because you do feel so alone. You feel like you're the only person in the world who's experienced this, you know. And so um, I can't, I really can't thank you enough. And, and forever in my days, I will be indebted for the love, friendship, and kindness everyone here gave to me in any way, shape, or form. So I wanted to make that clear. Um, I think this is probably going to be my last video on grief. I will be moving forward. I will still be talking about my Andy because he's, he's in my heart and he was a part of my life and he will always be a part of my life. And so please do not fear, feel fearful of ever mentioning his name to me. It's nice to know that you know his name, okay? So it's not a taboo subject. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. It's, it's short and it's sweet and it's somewhat bittersweet. Um, I still have a shrine over there and I'm still not sure what kind of change I'm going to make to it. There will be a change but um, I'm not sure just yet. We'll see how that goes also moving forward. Um, when I feel the time is right, then we'll tackle it from there. Anyway, I send you all much chakra love, and I thank you so much again for being here. Mwah.